Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about camera stabilizers, specifically the science behind stabilizers and what you need to know to be able to design your own. You're probably familiar with Newton's first and second laws. The first law is the law of inertia. It says that a mass wants to continue doing what it's doing unless it's acted upon by a force. Newton's second law states that the sum of all vector forces equals the mass times the vector acceleration. Well, that's great, uh, but it really only works for linear systems and constant accelerations. We're more concerned with rotational systems because the whole point of a camera stabilizer is to minimize camera shake, which is typically motions like this. So for a small handheld unit, we're concerned with rotational systems, and if we modify this equation slightly, we can see that torque equals I alpha. We're trying to minimize the alpha. So there's two ways to do that according to this equation. You can either decrease the torque or you can increase the I, which is rotational inertia, which is the analog to mass in a linear system. What's really great though about I, before we talk about the equation, is that I is made up of two components. It's mass and that mass is position. And this is why the Steadicam works to begin with. What Garrett Brown realized in the 70s was that if you separate the camera's major masses, the camera, monitor, and battery, and spread them apart, you can increase the rotational inertia of the system and stabilize the camera. We're going to be doing something similar with our handheld system, except we're not going to have monitor and batteries down here because all of the little cameras that we shoot with are self-contained. So we'll use a camera, uh, a body of some sort, and a set of counterweights. There are many lookup tables available online, but a few of the more common ones are shown here in this video. We'll mostly be dealing with simplifications uh, such as point masses, rectangular blocks, cylinders, and tubes are our four basic shapes that we'll be using. You'll also need to know how to calculate the center of gravity of a system. If you haven't seen my video on how to calculate the center of gravity of a one-dimensional system, go back and watch that. And to use it for a two-dimensional system, you simply flip the reference axis and run it again. A second method that you can use, of course, to stabilize your camera is to reduce the torque. Torque is the twisting force instead of a linear force. To reduce the torque, which is a force times the distance, you can either reduce your force that you apply, or you can reduce the distance between where that force is applied and the axis of rotation. For our handheld stabilizer, the axis of rotation will be our gimbal. For your typical handheld stabilizer, the one that I made, I use a front arm linkage off of a radio controlled car and a skateboard bearing so that I have two axes coincident with each other for my uh, pitch and my roll and my yaw axis is very close by in the form of a skateboard bearing. <clears throat> so the gimbal is our support. The force that we apply though, when we do nice smooth pan moves and things like that, is really constant. So we can't really vary the force too much because you're probably going to be using very low forces to begin with. So the one thing we need to do is minimize the distance that that force acts. Well what distance are we talking about? I'm glad you asked. The distance that we're referring to is the distance between the gimbal, where the force is applied according to as far as the system is concerned, and the center of gravity of the entire system. That's why I recommend you know how to calculate center of gravities. To calculate a center of gravity of a system like this, it's easy if you just break it up into its components and then calculate the center of gravity along the two axes. For the most part, our systems will be bilaterally symmetric, just like we are. So you don't really have to calculate the center of gravity along uh, your right to left axis, which I'll call the Y axis. But you really should, because even though the body of your stabilizer and your weights might be symmetrical along that axis, the camera will not be. So we calculate the center of gravity here simply in our two-dimensional sketch. And this is going to tell us where the center of gravity is, and therefore where the gimbal needs to be. The whole point of how to apply all this, of course, is to make sure that you get the center of gravity of your entire system to exist at a point just below the gimbal. Now in any system, the center of gravity will of course exist beneath its support because that's how physics works. Now what I've seen online are lots of people making their own stabilizers. 
And the problem they seem to have is they don't have stabilizers, they have pendulums. This is a balance issue, and that is because their center of gravity is too far away from the gimbal. You can see here in the design that I had calculated in SOLIDWORKS that the center of gravity of this system is about 3 16th offset from the gimbal, which is perfect as far as I'm concerned. You can't put the center of gravity directly at the gimbal because then you'd have neutral static stability and your system could want to settle in any orientation, which of course is not what we want. Now you're going to have an eye, of course, for each of your three axes, roll, pitch, and yaw. The two that we're most concerned with, of course, are your pitch and your roll. Your yaw axis, or your panning axis, won't have nearly as much inertia to it because everything is pretty much in a vertical orientation. I'm also going to do a video on how to calculate centroids and eyes for various shapes. And that'll kind of be a prequel to this series. But if you already know how to calculate centroids and centers of gravity and eyes and all things like that, then don't even bother watching those. I hope this kind of helps explain things a little bit. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can stay updated with this video series on camera stabilizers. But I'm Mike Thompson. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.